Hey guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and welcome to the third video in our character creation course. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create and sculpt the head and facial features for this character that you see on your screen. Now, if you've been following along up to this point, you have the base mesh already created. You've created a backup of not only the base mesh, but you've separated out these pieces and created backups of them as well. Now, if you haven't done that, or if you're just starting at this video for whatever reason, you can click on the card right up here. And it will take you to the first video in the series so that you can get a walkthrough of how to do all of those things and then join us back at this video where we're going to sculpt the head. So without further ado, let's get into some head sculpting. Because of the way we set up our model when we were preparing our mesh in the previous two videos, the head still has a mirror modifier on it, which means that vertices only technically exist on the right hand side of our model. So what we need to do is apply the mirror modifier and just come over to the wrench icon and and hit apply on the mirror modifier. Now, when we tab in edit mode, we've got vertices all the way around. Now, at this point, we're gonna jump into sculpt mode. So hit control tab to bring up the pie chart here and then go down to sculpt mode. Now, at this point, I'd like to point out that it is far, far easier to sculpt using a drawing tablet with pressure sensitivity because it will allow you to get much finer detail when you're sculpting, but you can sculpt with a mouse if you don't have a drawing tablet. Now, if you have a little bit of cash and you're a beginner and you wanna pick up a, a cheap but good drawing tablet, you can check the link in the description for the tablet that I recommend for absolute beginners. And if you've got a little bit extra money and you wanna sculpt on the same equipment that I have for some reason, you can check the link in the description as well for the one that I actually use. Back to sculpting. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is increase the mesh density. Now to do that, we're gonna turn on dynamic topology and change the detailing from relative detail to brush detail because I think that's a much better way to get uh, detail because the density will get created based on the size of your brush rather than just how close you are to the mesh you're sculpting on. If you don't know what dynamic topology is, you can check out this card right here and it will take you to my dynamic topology video, which will give you a complete understanding of how Blender's dynamic topology actually works. So that said, let's grab the inflate brush by hitting I or opening up our tool window and clicking inflate and then lowering the strength down because we're not trying to inflate the model too much. We're actually just trying to generate new mesh and you can see it generating a bit, but we don't really see any Anything happening too much and that's because the mesh is being generated but it's not going to show until we hold shift to smooth it out and then we can see all of the stuff that we generated all right so just go ahead and increase the mesh density on your entire mesh but just know we're gonna to continue to change things up a bit. Now, look at our model from the right-hand side or so that you can see your reference image. Hit K to bring up the snake hook brush. And what we're gonna do is just position the mesh a little bit more accurately to our reference model. So we can push and pull these different sections until they line up pretty much with what we can expect from our reference. So as you're sculpting, what we're essentially doing is setting up our base mesh and its general form. Because what happens a lot when beginners are sculpting, or at least what happened when I was teaching sculpting and when I started sculpting myself, is I would wanna to move too quickly into the details. And that's not good. So you wanna make sure that your basic form is down long before you get into the details. So if you're not happy with the overall form and shape of your model, like for example, this weird section here with the head, you wanna make sure that that is completely fixed before you start adding any extra detail to your mesh because what'll happen is you'll create detail that looks good and then you'll look at the overall shape and be like ah that's wrong and then you'll have to start over and it's just not a great process in general so get your shape down and then once you're 100% happy with the shape of your mesh you can get down with the details. So we have basically created uh, the shape from the right hand side. We can just check that a little bit, maybe make some final touches here. We'll come in with these extra details in a minute when we get to that point. And let's look at this from the front. And remember, we are creating our model based on our right hand side, not based on the left, but you want to set this up for your own purposes. So we're creating a little bit of a jawline here. And I'm going to bring in the head just a bit to give us a spot. So when the ear gets cr created, we won't have to worry about that too much. Now I'm generally okay with this face shape, but let's go ahead and lower our smoothing. So hit S to pull up the smooth brush and then drop the strength down to 0.5. Now, 
I don't know if you guys know this, but I haven't been able to find this setting anywhere. So if you find this setting for unifying the brush strength across all of your brushes, please let me know in the comments below because I have scoured the internet and I have not been able to find where you can do that. You used to be able to do it in earlier versions of Blender, but you can't do it anymore. And it's really freaking annoying having to switch between strengths of different brushes. It's not the way that I like to sculpt. So if you know where that setting is, please, 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 please let me know in the comments below. All right, from here, we've got uh, actually a pretty good head shape. I'm kind of okay with that as overall, just maybe push this up towards the chin so we get a more defined chin area before we get started on that. But now the basic shape of our head is good and it's time to add in some basic shape for our overall facial structure so that way we can make sure that things actually exist where they're supposed to. So uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna switch to the annotation brush. So come over down here to the tool for the annotation brush change the placement from 3D cursor to surface, and we're gonna just draw out some proportions real quick. So the head is essentially broken up into thirds. You have a third from your eyebrows roughly to the top of your forehead, which is the bottom of your hairline. You have a third from the eyebrow down to roughly the bottom of your nose, and then a third from the bottom of your nose to your chin. And you've got some different proportions broken up in there depending on like what you're talking about. So let's go ahead and draw out some of these proportions. So let's say the hairline is gonna be right about there. And then if we were to break that roughly into thirds, we would get something like that. So here we have a third, here we have a third, and here we have a third, roughly. It's not perfect. This is actually probably a bit too big. So if here's our hairline, we go to like there and then there. Yeah, that's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna figure it out as you go. And then these thirds will affect how things map around your head in general. So we'll kind of take that all the way around there. That's probably fine. We don't need it to go off our mesh. So ears are going to get drawn in this section here. The nose is gonna come out here like that and then we've got our chin line our lips will appear in here and there we go so now that we've marked out this stuff which is a great tool for sculpting by the way let's go ahead and start actually applying some of these shapes so i'm gonna grab the grab tool here and just kind of create for ourselves a more angled jawline that's probably a Okay, and just to fully map out that jawline, we're gonna go grab the clay strips brush, mark in here, and the jaw goes to right about the middle of the head. Now, here's an annoying thing that Blender does by default when you're adding on clay strips, and it's change the uh, radius by pressure sensitivity. So make sure you turn that crap off because that is one of the worst parts that they've done with this new Blender update. You might like it, I think it's dumb, Difference of opinion, but I think I'm right on that one. It's kind of dumb to change your radius based on your pressure sensitivity. Makes sense for the strength, but dumb for the radius. So we're gonna just map out this jawline. Kind of be okay with that. Smooth that out a bit so it maps a little bit better. And then come in with the crease brush with a smaller and light crease just along the bottom of the jaw here, just to give us a full, like this is where the jaw will exist. All right, there we go. Now we have our jawline. We could then come in and kind of inflate the rest of this lightly to get the same mesh density. If you want it to look a little bit smoother, smooth out the difference between it so you don't have a jutting jawline from the overall skin there. And now it's time to add in our nose. So let's go back to the clay strips brush and come right to the middle and just generate a nose. So we're just gonna go back and forth again and again and again. So we're just gonna go kind of back and forth on this nose here, gonna give us our, our big section and then we can smooth this down. Now that is just a general placement of our nose. We can look at this from the right hand side to get a better approximation of where the nose should be overall, something maybe like that. And you can see that I didn't exactly line up my model with the thirds perfectly so a little bit of an adjustment there is not the, gonna be the worst thing in the world all right from here it's time to add in the eyes so let's take some clay strips and kind of mark out where our eyebrows are going to be something like here ish so then we'll turn the clay strips to the negative make our brush a little smaller and dig out an eye section for us. And this is just where we're gonna place in some eyeballs. Now, if you haven't sculpted a face before, if you haven't sculpted many, you don't have to sculpt the 
entire model from one object and we're not going to so we're just going to make an eye socket here and then once we're satisfied with that which we can just pull that back a little bit further there we go we can now add in some uh, eyes to give us where those actually need to go. So I'm just gonna deepen that there for a second. And we're gonna save our model. Just make sure you're, when you're sculpting, you're saving pretty frequently because you don't wanna end up like Blender crashing if your computer is prone to crashing. All right, so hit Shift A, add in a UV sphere, move it up because the 3D cursor is at the uh, zero, zero, zero right now. And we're gonna create eyes from this. So we're just gonna scale down, place it roughly where it needs to go. Look at it from the front, something like that. Right click, shade it smooth, and then add a mirror modifier. Now, to get this to mirror across to the other eye socket, we're gonna go to the mirror modifier, hit mirror object, and then just choose head. And so now, wherever we place this, it's just gonna mirror across the head's internal X axis. So we're going to place this a little bit further down and then a little bit further back. And that should be right about where the eye is. Maybe we can scale that down a bit. And that's gonna give us a good proportion for the eye. Now, while we are creating the eye, let's also go ahead and generate the model object for our ear. So shift A and add in a cylinder, move this up from the bottom. That is way too big. So let's rotate that on the Y axis, 90 degrees, scale that to say 0.1 overall and kind of place this in the general section of where the ear is going to be. Add a mirror modifier to this and have it mirror across the head. All right, so we wanna scale this down on its local Z axis to right about there. Control A will allow us to then apply that scale. And then we can rotate this on the Z axis so that it sticks out just a little bit. From here, we can kind of place it where the ear is supposed to go. And the ears generally go right about there. And then we'll move this in on the Z axis. So when we finally actually apply this to our model after sculpting the ear separately, it will line up basically where that ear marking that we created is. Okay, so given the length of this current video right now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna finish up the head and then I'm gonna make some shorter, smaller videos for sculpting the uh, the eye area with the eyelids and then sculpting the ear and the mouth. So those will be their own separate, smaller, shorter videos. But let's go ahead and finish up our face here. So select the head again and go back to our model. And what we notice is the jawline doesn't quite work. So let's grab the grab brush again and just kind of pull this jawline back down and then maybe push in along what we've got here. We can also set up the nose a little bit better by just grabbing and pulling out these sections and push that down. Grab the clay strips brush, come in here. Oh, that's still in the negative from making our eye holes earlier. Come in here and create a bigger brow and try to blend this a little bit better in with the rest of the forehead. It's still gonna stick out a bit just because we have uh, like a full muscle here that allows us to do a lot more facial expressions and everything. So it's okay if it pops out a little bit, but you do want to make it kind of blend really well with the forehead. So we can then smooth all of that out. Use the grab brush again, and we're gonna pull in the part of the face right near the eyes here and we'll grab the clay strips brush again kind of bring this out a bit just to give us more of a cheekbone all right and we could continue to add in some detail here but that'll probably be the focus of its own video in this course is just sculpting the nose but we just want to get some of these other details just better so that way when we actually start working with them it'll be easy for us okay there's two things left that we really need to do before this video is over and the head shape is solidified we want to add in a little section for the mouth so grab the clay strips brush and essentially just do something like that now you want to stop the mouth entirely about halfway through the eye so right about there so we'll add in that little pouch there and that'll give us a good start for when we actually get to our lips and then we want to add in the neck muscles because a good head doesn't look good unless it has a good neck on it as well and we have this muscle that kind of starts from behind the jaw and comes forward so we're gonna just create something that does that now this is right about where our 
collarbone would be. So let's just, let's just grab the uh, snake hook brush here and create for ourselves a basic collarbone and maybe uh, some trap section. Now that's not really going to be shown because remember we have the shirt and that is what's going to do most of the definition of that area since our character is not going to be shirtless. But this will allow us to get a much better neck shape overall, which will help us with our model making it look a little bit more realistic. So we can add in some trap muscles here coming down the back smooth all of that out and we'll smooth out this neck connection we increase this muscle put it right about there take that section in a bit and add a little tiny bit of an adam's apple okay and the head itself the jaw does not like just stop skin doesn't just stop like that so we're going to just add a little clay strip right along the edge here smooth all of that out so it looks more like a real skin transition and not a hard surface cut all right and overall the model looks pretty good especially for 16 minutes of continual footage so at this point i'm going to call this video done and in the next video we'll start working on some of these facial features i'm sir pinkbeard thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video